Hi guys, can you hear me if anyone is waiting? I would love to know if anyone can hear me. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, so it sounds pretty good. Hi, Dina. Hi, Sharon. Nice to see you here. Okay. Hi, Vandana, Dina, Anne. Hi, Julie. <laughs> it's nice to see you here again. I know it's, isn't it late in Australia? Oh, 10 a.m., okay. I'm trying to get the right uh, look here. Hi, Angela. Hi, Carrie. There you go. That looks a little better, huh? So this painting, you guys, one... I just wanted to show you. I love the old world feel of this painting. It's the balloon rolls on this one. Hi, Linda. Yeah, it's hot in Portland today, isn't today and yesterday? It's been really hot here. Ooh, Stephanie, not as hot as Florida. <laughs> but in case you don't know, we're kind of babies here in Portland because. We don't get super hot weather for long periods of time, so we actually can't deal with it very well. At least I know I can't. But we don't have air conditioning because it doesn't last very long, so nobody gets air conditioning. So. Hi, Margaret. Thanks for coming. Hi, Patricia. Sorry if I missed any of you saying hello. Having, um, I'm really curious about what, uh, not fully sure what I'm going to do today, but I do want to show you this painting and look at these balloon rolls on this one. They turn out super pretty. Look at that. Hi, Selena. And then I used a lot of high flow for that gold, actually. And that gold is what makes, it's really shiny. It's pretty. But this painting got me looking, um, look at this corner up here, look at the dip. I love that dip technique. And it made me really want to do another one, so I've been thinking about that today. You know, I am not Fiona, <laughs> so my dips do not always work. And in fact, I learned to do a dip because Fiona and I did a collaboration. One of the things when I started my channel, I thought, I really want to do collaborations because um, it pushed me to do things that I wouldn't normally do, and those flower dips are one of them. It, I can't believe how hard they are to get perfectly right. Um, I'm going to show you the colors that I'm using today. I just, I've been really, I just didn't have time to mix up a ton of colors today, and 
know, I'm having this weird ankle pain, so I keep thinking my ankle's gonna spaz out at any second. Um, all right, so what we have is a Payne's Gray. Now, one thing I do know I wanna remind to talk to you guys about is pouring mediums. I really wanna talk about pouring mediums. Say hi, Sylvie. Hi, Allie. This is a folk art, um, beautiful folk art, that quartz, blue quartz. I'm in love with this. I'm in love with that whole treasure line. I'm going to show you what the bottle looks like in case you are just joining. This is the folk art uh, treasure line. If you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty amazing. Um, it is expensive, so try to find it with one of those Michaels coupons. Um, so this is a quinacridone violet. This is called, this is primary elements and it's called, um, oh, it's magenta <laughs> with antique rose primary elements in it. I, so that's kind of a, these are, some of these are custom mixed. This is a watermelon color I just made with uh, Golden's Reds and um, Manganese Blue Hue. And this is just like a beautiful metal. Oh, this is an Extreme Sheen. Thank you, Linda, Linda, Linda Whitlow, for this Extreme Sheen Blue Sapphire, I believe. And a pearl. This is just a just a pearl with a pearl uh, pouring, or a pearl mixing medium, acrylic medium. Hi mom, thank you for joining me. Hi Donna. Um, yeah, Jean, isn't that treasure line ri ridiculously expensive? I'm sad. Like, it makes me sad, but I also just love painting with it too, so I don't know. The results, I should show you the results <laughs> in the dried painting. Let me go grab one, because it's ridiculous. I have to go take it off my wall. Hold on. <clears throat> the results of that uh, treasure line, I have a few different uh, paintings I've used it on. But for example, here's one, and I'm going to try to catch the light here in the right way. Oh, it's hard to see, but I used it in this one, really pretty. And uh, there was, this was called Cover Your Pour, and then um, I did, let me see. And then this one, also a cover your pour. Hi, Brenda. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? It's ridiculously shiny and lovely. And I used a few of those treasure colors in this one, too. But yeah, they're gorgeous and expensive. And, you know, that's how it goes. Now, all the colors have a base of golden today, um, for the most part, except for the few that I pointed out. And um, so that's what we're going to be working with. But I do want to talk about pouring mediums for just a second. Um, one thing I want to talk about is, this might be something you could even get a pencil and write down, because I think it's valuable. This is, this is like the summation of knowledge I've learned over the last year and a half doing this. And I probably should have like some organized, like Olga, Solby, Smart Art Material sort of beautiful <laughs> video showing everything and all the different mediums and all the stuff. But I'm just not that organized. <laughs> so instead, those of you who are joining me live, I'm actually gonna share, hi Mamesy, I'm actually gonna share um, with you the, the little secrets. So. Liquitex pouring medium, which I'm almost out of. Um, Liquitex pouring medium, you guys know what that looks like. This is just what I have right now. But 
This pouring medium is awesome for getting those big pebble cells. If you want big pebble cells in your paintings, like kind of like Sarah Mac, uh, Mina Villegas uses Liquitex pouring medium. Those big, uh, Elise Fournier, she, when she first started, she had some pretty paintings with the big pebble cells. Liquitex pouring medium is awesome for that. And it creates those big, beautiful pebble-like cells. I don't have um, any examples because I sell all my work. So I rarely have examples unless I was like editing a video and could go back and find some. Um, glue. Let's talk about glue. I used glue in my pouring mediums today. Hi, Sandra. So nice to see you here. Hi, Judy. Okay, glue all. If you're going to use glue, this is the one to do if you're on a budget. Okay? I don't want that little glove. Um, this is the one, Elmer's glue all. If you're not on a budget and you can afford it, this is the one I actually recommend. And it's by Linico. It is a permanent PVA adhesive. It remains flexible. It dries clear. Um, it is for book binding and stuff. So it's archival. And this is what I recommend if you can afford it. And I do love this glue. This That gallon has lasted me a long time. I don't usually use a lot of glue. What does glue do? Glue helps you hold the lines and shapes. So if you want to do a ring pour and you want all your rings to turn out absolutely stunningly, individually um, held together, you use glue. If you want your colors to not bleed together too much, glue works for that too. Um, cells, if you want to use, want to get like waterfall acrylic, uh, Karen Dershin kind of cells, um, or jelly cube cells, silicone plus glue. And I think some of them might use a GAC or something. I highly recommend you use GAC 800 if you're gonna use glue. Why? Because glue has a tendency for me to craze and I don't like that. So, uh, GAC 800. This is what GAC 800, it helps reduce crazing. And I find it has a beautiful finish. It just, you don't have to use it very much. It's so expensive, you guys. So, uh, I, whoops, sorry if you heard that bang. Uh, I just put mine in a little bottle like this. And I put a little squirt in my paints. Not much. Now, if you're using mostly glue, you'll want to use like, 70 glue and 30% this or 25% this or something because you're going to have to be more careful about crazing. But that GAC 100 is what you definitely want to use with glue. Now, if you have no budget, which most of us have a budget. Yes, Carrie, the Mod Podge. That's a, I, I'm getting to that one. Let me just keep going on the, the line here. But GAC 100. So the thing about it is... <clears throat> um, Oh, I lost my uh, train of thought. Yeah, GAC is basically golden pouring medium in disguise, and I've talked to uh, the golden people about this. So it's basically the same thing. Um, I find personally the golden pouring medium to be too expensive for just regular use. So I have a little bottle of it. Um, I have a little, literally a little bottle of the golden pouring medium, and it's great. If you're gonna use heavy body paints, then golden pouring mediums is awesome. The gloss on the final product is absolutely gorgeous. And like, oh, this wasn't safe. If you have no budget, like you're totally able to spend whatever you want on paints, get the golden heavy body paints, golden pouring medium beautiful. It's like the result is ridiculously beautiful. However, you won't get any cells or lacing with that. And I, there's, that's one thing that Golden's kind of missing. I don't, I personally have, don't get cells or very much lacing with that. What gives cells and lacing on its own? That's our buddy Floetrol. That's our Floetrol. 
Um, Jean, um, I'm not sure I understand your question if you could restate uh, it. Floetrol, lacing, it gives you some cells. Um, I love the consistency when it's doing well. It's inexpensive. This is why I use Floetrol above and beyond all other pouring mediums. I just don't have troubles with it. <laughs> so I really, um, I just really enjoy it. So that's why Floetrol is awesome. Now, the newest, uh, like Carrie mentioned, the newest pouring medium I've used is Mod Podge. And it acts almost exactly like glue. Um, and the thing about that is it has uh, the lasting quality where, you know, it, it'll help keep your lines. It, does, it help makes things not make colors not mixed together too much. Um, it's kind of, I like the consistency. I don't like the smell. I don't know, but. Um, okay, Jean, your question is, if you do just a squirt of GAC per color, then try pouring medium instead. I do put a little bit of GAC in a lot of my pouring media, my pouring mediums, but I guess one thing I want to say is this. Uh, did you guys know that when you mix up different pouring mediums, you get different effects? So if I'm trying to go for a swipe, I probably am, I'm not going to use this. In fact, Lamb with Heartfelt Artistries, she said, Heather, my swipes suck. I can't get a swipe I don't, to save my life. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. She's using Mod Podge. It doesn't, it's not great for swipes. You know what's great for swipes? If you want like the Kathleen Osmore, uh, Courtney Helsher swipe, then you would use the GAC 800 and Floetrol mix. Um, if you want uh, a swipe with a lot of silicone and big crazy looking cells, you would use Floetrol and silicone like, uh, like Life and Splatters, like Gail Burston. So that gives you some um, information. I hope that's helpful. And the question, which one prevents cracking? GAC 800 is the one that prevents cracking, and that's what I would suggest using if you're going to use glue. So today, the special part about the pouring medium today that I used is I used tons of glue, just because that's what I have the most of right now. So I just, <laughs> I never use glue, really. I don't love it. I don't, it's really sticky, and um, I don't just love it, but that's what I have today most of, so I decided to use it, and we're going to see what happens. I also think it might be good for a dip, and so that's one thing I'm going to try to do is a big dip, either plastic wrap or, yeah, probably, probably a plastic wrap dip or something. And... These canvases, 16 by 20 canvas, that I'm going to be using today. Thank you so much for being here today, you guys. I was looking forward to this all week, honestly. And then I think what, I, what happens to me is there's so many things I want to share. I get lost and I don't... Um, I don't, I don't know what to do when the time comes. <laughs> I just don't even know. I don't even, I, there's just so many things. And I, I even try making lists and sometimes I go back and look at my list and I don't even know what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> I don't know if any of you do that. But anyway, okay. So one thing I wanted to do today, I was thinking was, um, I've never tried this. You're welcome, Allie. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the lives because they are fun. Um, thank you, Mina, so much. That's a super chat, you guys. And if you want to donate to me directly right here on the chat, you can do a super chat. And they are so appreciated. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate the donations. It helps me keep painting. And, um, I mean, your support is awesome. It means so much to me. Um, 
So one thing I was thinking of you guys, I'm going to try to bring you in a little bit. Let's see if that works. Eh, it's too much almost. It's hard because the camera is way above my head. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, so what I've seen people do this little bottom bottle pour I is um, they usually flood the whole canvas. And yes, I, I agree, Sharon. Let's say a prayer for Sarah Max. She is going in for some surgery and... Uh, you know, I have a full confidence that everything will be perfect with her. I truly believe that, and we all need to just believe that for her. So, um, hi, <laughs> hi, Christine. <laughs> uh, so normally what you see these bottle bottom pours is you like flood the whole canvas. I thought there's an artist that I love on Instagram. And I am going to see if there's any way I can share her feed. Her name is MS Flow Art. Okay. This may not work. I'm going to try. MS Flow Art. Oh, yeah. I'm terrible at this. Let me see. I have back. There we go. Back. There we go. Do you see her name? MS Flow Art. Oops. Pablo, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, that that is her name. And she, I just saw this. Oh my God. Pablo's Precious Metals. I am so blown away right now. Thank you so much. That's so beautiful. Your support is amazing. Thank you so I feel so humbled. You guys don't know me, but I'm a crier. And, and that's just the kind of thing that I would cry over right now. I appreciate your support. Thank you. I have to take a drink of water now. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> my my phone. That's that I have a few phones. That one is definitely I try to keep care of it. Okay, painting. I'm going to do a pour instead of flooding this. I'm decided to do a pour on the outside with a bottle pour in the center. That's my plan. And then I think I'm going to try to dip it if it the the center part. So, let's let's see what I can do. This is all new. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um meaning I've never done this before or anything like it. But I just thought it would be fun. So, I'm going to try. You guys have to forgive my my paint cup has seen better days, truthfully. I wish Maybe I could find a different one. This is the downside to the silicone cups. They're great for resin, but they're hard to clean out. I can't do any of, oh, see that ring? That's why I shouldn't use that. Um, they're hard to clean out, and I can't put any anything down my sink. My landlord will be so unhappy. Okay. Is yours covered in paint too, Julie? <laughs> All right, so let's do this. I want to do a pour for, and it's going to be a really stretched out pour. I'm not going to go for any specific patterns or anything like that. I just want, um, well, one thing I do know I want for sure is I want there to be white at the bottom because I'm going to put the, the center is going to be the bottle bottom pour. So I'm going to put that in the center. So I know that I want to give some space for the creation of that, meaning I don't want any colors at the end. And then I think we'll start. So the color that we put in first is the one comes out last. And then I think we'll start with some beautiful light colors. Ooh, trying not to stick 
still paint here. Really. These paints are a little thinner than my usual, you guys, so I'm <clears throat> curious to see what will happen. I'm not, I generally do fairly thick paints, so this is definitely an experiment for me, and I don't use glue. So all the way around, there's a couple things that's going to make this uh, interesting for me. And I've never <laughs> used a bottle bottom, so... We're going to see what happens with that. And <clears throat> it could fail. I just want you guys to be aware. I do have paintings that fail still. Um, I'm not infallible. I usually can save them into something. And a lot of times I can save it into something I would embellish on later. I'm just going to put a tiny bit. I don't really want white to be in that pore necessarily, but I do want to separate the colors, the purple from the blues. If you guys do X out of the uh, chat or leave the chat, try to come back and find the find where we're at. So then you're con you don't miss anything if I've covered anything already. Now I'm just going on with the blues, all the blue colors that I made. Uh, Payne's gray, these are extremely similar ones right here. I have a few metallics and a lot of non-metallics today. Yeah, I don't know where the like button is because I'm always doing, I think you just X out of the chat part. There's an X, like for me, there's an X and you can just X out of that part and hit like. But don't worry about that so much, you know, just your participation is amazing and I appreciate each and every one of you being here right now. It's amazing. Hi, serendipity. This is that treasures line that I'm totally in love with, which is not for sale on Amazon, by the way, if you wanted to find it, it is not on Amazon. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting white, yellow, all the reds and pinks and golds. Now we're going to the green, uh, the blues, and the reason I'm kind of going to stick with the blues because I, I want um, the center to have more light coming from it, if that makes sense. And this is my, you guys, these are my concepts. This may not be reality, okay? <laughs> because you know, you know how it goes. If you have a paint that you wanna just dump down into here, pour it from up high. That's what I just did with that little bit of white. So I could, uh, it would, the gravity would force it to drop down into that cup. Here's some more blue. And Payne's gray. And I think that's probably enough paint for this, for the most part. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of gold for fun. Okay. Wow, Michael's is already sold out of the treasures line. Of course they are. It's amazing. Okay. In my perfect world, I would be able to cup off that middle section, like, with you know, I'd be able to pour around it and keep it from having any paint on there. I don't know, if you guys have seen how someone could do that, you let me know. I mean, I could have planned ahead, of course, and put some, um, what, some contact paper right here and then peel it back when I'm done. Of course, I don't plan ahead, but... For now, this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to do a straight pour. We're 
gonna do the Gina DeLuca twist here. And the only reason you'd want to twist like that is so all of your paints, uh, all of one color doesn't end up in the same place the whole time. I don't usually do that, but what, what the heck. Oh, how pretty. Looks like sunshine. Looks like the sunset on the water. Hi, Tish. Nice to see you here. I have a habit of putting gold, a gold ring around almost all of my paintings. I cannot help myself. Now I'm just injecting some paint under there. Just some white. And I'm gonna roll this paint over the edge of the gold. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. But I'm not deeply concerned about the pattern or anything. But you know, here's the thing. If something's really beautiful, you don't have to stick to your original plan. I don't like to do that because actually sometimes it's so pretty, it's just, it would be a shame to ruin it by trying to stick to something. Like my favorite part of this painting already is this part right here, I'll desperately try to save that if I can. Okay, so now I'm going to see, maybe I need to stretch this out just a tiny bit more. Now, if you are worried about the pattern, let's say you wanted to keep that ring looking a certain way, you would need to do what I'm doing, which is stretch it out slowly, come back to the center a little bit, and then you would stretch it out the other direction and come back to the center a bit. This is so pretty. I hate messing it up. But then again, you guys should know already that I try not to do things that are totally traditional in my work, I like to do things that look a little different. This definitely looks like, it looks like a paint kiss, doesn't it? I'm, I'm kind of shocked that the, um, but this is the effect of the glue. So see how separate these colors stay, this red stayed with that? It's because of all that glue I put in there. That's what I'm saying, you know? If you want to do like a straight pour and get a ton of those gold cells and pearl cells, you wouldn't use a lot of glue in your mix that I found. I think a flow trial works really great just for that. All right, so now it's pretty thin. And I'm going to try this little bottle pour in the center of it. I had to kind of come out of myself because, boy, I was in another world when I was mixing my paint. I don't know if that happens to you, but I was listening to Alan Watts. <laughs> Give a thumbs up if you know who Alan Watts is. Um, hi, Melanie. Tish, the best mixing recipe for extreme sheen. Yes. Extreme Sheen Paint, 50%. Flow Trawl, 50%. Squirt of Liquitex Pouring Medium. And then make it the same consistency as the rest of your paints. That's it. So if your paints are thick, leave it like that. If your paints are thinner, you can add a tiny little bit of water. So, and that is my advice to you. All right, let's start with a little bit of the white. 
I don't know. I watch Fiona do this. She makes it look simple, but of course, she makes every flower dip look simple. She said she'd try to join me, but man, it's like 3 a.m. over there in the Slovenia. <laughs> so. I don't blame her if she's not here. I don't know. Hmm. So the thing about this is sometimes that yellow um, mixed with like a magenta will make this really pretty peach color sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. So I don't know. But we're going to try a little bit and see what happens. You're so sweet. Thank you. Sometimes I wonder if I'm just blathering on. I usually listen to music while I paint, so it's really a different feel for me to do this. See, I could totally be messing this up right now. <laughs> I'm looking at this going, huh? Well, you just never know. I think Fiona puts white between every single layer, and I did not do that. I'm not really trying to make a flower necessarily. But if one comes out of it, that'll be pretty. I won't be mad. Now the question here is, you can see, I'm gonna have a lot of paint in the center, but I've already, but not a lot of paint out here on the edge of the canvas yet. So, there will have to be um, something I'm going to have to do. Now, yeah, I could start adding blue in here. And I was trying to think about, there's blue underneath. So if I do any blue rolls or I do any type of uh, dip, the blue that's already down there is going to pull through, which is why I'm being heavy right now on the reds. That's my thought process, at least. I don't know. It could all go whatever way it goes. But anyway, I don't know if any of you guys know who Alan Watts is, okay? But I was just listening to Alan Watts before I came on here. And oh my gosh. He had me thinking about life, contemplating life. Sometimes I'm, I think I am too much of a thinker. I'm too deep of a thinker. I get too much in my head about life and one of the things that he talks about is the Zen moments in our life where we literally just have to stop and be in the present moment instead of thinking about, oh my God, the future, what am I going to do, how am I going to control this, you know, what does everything that mean, what, what does the future hold, what am I, you know, just all the worrisome stuff that we do every day and and um, so we just had me thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> How crazy is that? Aww. Yeah, you know what? I'm so sorry to hear about your wife and, you know, life is really a challenge. We have so much going on right now. We really do, all of us. I don't know anyone that's not affected by the things going on in our world, and I have to say it's deeply affecting me. I am totally out of control of most things in my life right now, so it's a very um, frustrating feeling, you know, but control is absolutely an illusion. 
we don't actually have control over any parts of our life. <laughs> so, you know, and um, the only thing we really can do is get to know ourselves. And this is, this is something I, I be truly, truly believe in. And um, that's because the greatest cause of human suffering is not knowing yourself. And, and once you know yourself, you know the universe, you know God, you know all of the things that make the world what it is. So, you know, and that doesn't, that, that doesn't matter what your belief system is, really. It's just literally. So, this is what I was wondering is, if I did this, if there would be too much paint in the center and indeed, there is. So what if I... I'm trying to save this beautiful part over here. What if I... move this to the edge. Of course, as soon as I stretch it, the flower disappears. But I told you, I wasn't necessarily trying to make a flower. Let's just see what happens. I spend a lot of time researching um, my spiritual nature and I went one time, I think my mom, she can attest to this, that she couldn't find me in the park and I was, as a, and I was young, younger. We, we lived like really like two seconds from the park. It was right across the street from us. So that park was kind of like my backyard. And one time she couldn't find me and I was over in the church singing with the, um, <laughs> with the choir. I just heard music coming from there and it was so extraordinary. And I just got, I was drawn, but I've always been drawn to uh, music and this is very interesting, you guys. It would be fun to figure out a way for me to try to save, I'm trying to shift the center of gravity to here so I can maybe even go this direction a little bit without... <laughs> it would be fun to be able to do this flower and still kind of keep it looking like a flower a little bit. Wouldn't that be cool? This is a fun experiment so far, you guys. I don't sing, um, Lori, sorry, no, I don't sing. Um, my mom says I have a good voice, and you guys keep saying I have a good voice, but I have a really soft, like, Karen Carpenter sort of voice or something. I don't know, like, I've been a musician, though, and played the flute and piano and drums and just all kinds of musical instruments in my life, but I've never been too avid of a singer. Wow, this makes me almost not even want to dip this at all. Look at how pretty it is. And I think for some of this, I actually have enough. It's actually thin enough that I might be able to get away with not taking any paint off of there. The one thing I don't like about glue is this. There's a lot of bubbles. And I also just mixed it too, so yes, this feels <laughs> just like a Hawaiian flower, right? So, okay. So what we want to do then, composition, let's talk about composition right now for this. So we have a lot of the gold and the rich reds and all that stuff right here. And then we have all the blues. It kind of works composition wise because if you guys know anything about the Fibonacci spiral, it's basically the law of thirds. And our eyes love things that are 
um, multiples of three, um, nine, or, or odds, basically, three, five, nines. And the Fibonacci spiral, it literally, I, I should actually, I'll give you a, a lesson on that sometime, because it's something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, but it kind of already works in that, in that it pulls your eye to one direction, but there's a lot of interest over here. I could actually just add white around this and, um, you know, it would work. It would totally work like that. I'm trying to decide if that's what I want to do. Or I could add more blues in this direction. Maybe what I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little layer um, of this white around the edge. I don't want to lose any more of this blue that I just love over here. So this white will act as like a new barrier now. We won't, oops, there's something that just came out of there. We don't want that on my canvas. Now, for all of you watching, you may have noticed I'm not uploading as many YouTube videos, and there are some changes coming to my channel. I am not formally announcing anything, but I definitely know that I'm going to be doing a live every week, and there's going to be some special um, privileges coming to my channel, um, and I'm going to figure out how to make this work since YouTube is not, is basically killing all of our small little channels off. I want to figure out a way to make it work for everyone. And um, yes, I'm going to do a live every week as often as I can, of course, because that's, that's what I want to do. You know what? I think we should just make a little, another little blue cup. Let me just uh, really quickly throw together a blue cup for this edge because I do like the lot I do like the white but I just don't want all that negative space there I don't know why sorry it's too much it's too much negative space The thing about the lives, um, I'm starting to calm down, <laughs> so I'm not as freaked out, which is awesome, because that was part of the first couple times I thought I was going to have a heart attack or something. I was so nervous to do it, honestly. It doesn't so much matter how this paint comes out the cup, you guys, because it's not really about that. Although I could have maybe used a little bit more white in here, but oh well. My bad. I get, I got over um, the blue. I mean, I got over the, the blue, I got over the nerves for painting with a camera on because it does, if it, if you hate what you did or if it doesn't work out, you can still always just delete it and you don't have to show anybody. There is definitely something to, um, you know, doing a live, you don't know if your painting is going to look beautiful, you don't know if it's going to turn out, um, you really have no control. But I feel like I'm at a place in my art career where I've done enough now and I feel comfortable enough that I can at least demonstrate how to try to recover from a fail, um, you know, what to do if things aren't working out. And at the end of the day, I think you guys would just 
forgive me <laughs> and know that I'm a real person. If something doesn't work out, this is just part of the art form. And right now, you all know I'm going to use my airbrush, right? Because I can't, I can't control myself. Thank you, Deborah. Now the thing is, is I want to tilt that paint over there, but I don't, this flower just keeps creeping, 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 creeping back. I want to put it back to where I think it should go composition wise, which is about right here. All right, here we go. I'm going to break out the airbrush, you guys. This is also why I don't I wait till the end to look at my um, paintings a lot of times before I name anything or before I even decide to talk about certain things because it's like it reveals itself to me as I go. And this art form, oh my gosh, this art form will teach you how to be in the moment, to be zen, to let go of your perceived notions. Um, it does that because you can't always force, you can't always control. Sometimes you have a plan for a painting and what comes out of the cup is nothing like you thought it was going to be. So, all right. Here's the airbrush. Now, the thing is, here's my little trick. Sometimes I will wrap my arm in it like this because otherwise that hose has the tendency to um, dunk in your painting at least expected times and it's terrible. So you always have the you always have the option of blowing the pattern into the white, which is really pretty, but oh my gosh, I'm loving this little bit right here. So I'm probably going to try to um, maintain that and actually you know what would be prettier too thank you hey thank you Pammy I appreciate you so much look I'm by doing this little line right here I'm gonna reiterate the feel of the wave so I'm gonna try to first blow it into This requires a little bit of concentration, so not trying to disrupt that pattern so I'm barely barely touching on my airbrush I still want it to look like it's going in there but you could do this with your mouth too I always end up getting um you know my boob in the painting Oh Lord, I said boob and now probably be demonetized or something. <laughs> it's crazy how strict they are about that stuff, but I understand why. This paint, this edge doesn't have very much paint on it, so I can go ahead and really blow this out. And, uh, Sorry if you guys can't see that all the way. I try to keep some of the stripes too, just for visual interest, you know, so it really looks like um, an ocean. Jan wants to know, how hard is it to control the airflow? Um, you learn to be gentle. See this, there's a little tip, right, this little button, and when you hit it, just push it straight down. It has a straight form of air that comes out, and it's I have it set to 25 psi. But what you can do is you can gent, uh, 
you can push it down and then gently push it down and each you know uh, pressure that you use causes less air now I think it's hard like I've definitely ruined things by blowing too much air and sometimes I've also created nice surprises that way so you can't be scared of it you just have to try and then understand that sometimes you know you're going to create a beautifully nice surprise when you do it um, so it is pressure driven yeah but if I if I set the PSI to like you know 50 or something I don't even know if, how high they go then when I press down it would just shoot out an incredible amount of air which we really I mean you don't want that necessarily that's you know you do want to have some control over it I gotta mess this up a little bit just for there's just too much paint right there even though I really want to move it. So I'm going to try to go around it. And yeah, this you could totally do this with your mouth and um, get a similar effect. All right, now let's turn this around and do... I'm going to just use this airbrush to spread this paint to the end of the canvas right here. And some of the other colors are start are coming through when I do that. That's okay. I think it actually looks kind of pretty. It actually composition wise makes a oh my gosh, I'm gonna turn this around for you guys so you can see and when I do that again, that's so pretty. So composition wise, the cool part about airbrushing this other side, even though I'm not adding the colors is that some of those colors are popping through and it's uh, mirroring the other side so you're getting like a mirror effect here I'll probably leave a little bit of white space just because we need some. <laughs> See, I didn't, that was too hard and it just was uncontrollable, but it's pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Um, now let me add a little bit of white over here. Now this is a pearl white and the white that I originally put on wasn't. So you're going to know that there will be a, dis a discrepancy in those two areas when it dries. So what I'm going to do to make it seem like I did it on purpose is I'm going to balloon roll that little area even though it's white on white. Um, yeah, I hear you Carrie. Um, I am not, I'm not sure if I'm going to move it because the more I move it the more this part stretches out, but that gets smaller. So um, it kind of loses its composition as a flower. So I'm not sure that I'm going to actually do that. So this is me just balloon rolling some of that white into the pearl white so that there is like a marriage between those two. So when it dries, it doesn't look like, oh, she ran out of paint over there and she just added this. <laughs> you bossy. <laughs> she says, move the canvas. You know, I'm, I'm painting here. I am trying to show you guys everything. I'm actually going to just see if 
see if I can move it a tiny bit over that direction and down a little bit. So, I don't know, should, I don't know, should I dip this? This is where you have to go, should I just stop because it's pretty right as it is? It's just kind of pretty right as it is. to do guys what do you think should I try to dip the flower it won't look like a flower anymore I can tell you that you want to know my gut says <laughs> you're gonna think I'm crazy but I really am missing now the white first I was like oh yeah that makes it look good but actually I kind of just want to continue the white feel so I'm covered up if there's something about your painting you don't like just do it because ultimately Look, and then I just slide that off real easy, like, and then back a little tiny bit. I just like that better. Try to get that completely white. Yeah, because it's so busy on the other side, and I'm just thinking, you know, we actually should maybe try to make this just fully white. I think this one is done. I'm going to try to show you guys close up if I can. Every time I move the camera, um, I risk freezing it and then we lose our stream sometimes. So let me see if I can just show you some of the beautiful parts. Now you see how I did my pour in many stages? This is often how I do my artwork. I very rarely, ooh, this part's pretty right here too. I want you to see that. See if you can. Oh, I'm trying not to put it on the wall. Oh, I can't quite get it in camera, but it's this part right here. It's really, really pretty. Now, the one thing I'm, I'm not loving right now is as the flow trawl settles, I'm getting a really uneven looking pattern in here. So here's the truth of the truth is I have to, um, I have to dump a little bit of this off and maybe not dump it off, but I have to tilt it a little bit and I might lose something, I don't know, but I have to because this is driving me crazy right here. I have to get some of this extra paint off 
and also I want just these beautiful, long, flowing streams of paint to come out from the airbrush part. So next time, I wouldn't maybe add as much white. That second line of white may have been a mistake. Bye bye, little blue. I love that blue, but it has to go too. And that's it. Now I love it. Yep. Kind of what I do is I work on a painting until there's nothing left to do. And I just get that feeling of like, okay, now I can't do anything else to it. If, if I do one more thing, it's not going to be right anymore. So um, that is one way I kind of feel like, oh, if a painting is done or not. Put a little bit more white on that and I was trying to get one of the colors out. I did airbrush the edge of the sunset area and then I covered it back up. <laughs> so if you missed that part, that's what happened. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys, today. Um, do you have any questions? Because this is just going to be a one painting day today for me. I have this pain going on in my ankle, and I feel like I need to put my foot up. So I have to say thank you so much for joining me today. If you guys ever see a painting you love, I would love you to contact me and all my paintings are for sale. In all the time I've been doing this, I've only kept one piece. And um, it's just a piece that has a lot of personal meaning to me. But all of my paintings are for sale if you're interested. Off camera, I might work on this little center a little bit. There's a, f it's, it's almost like I need to take a little bit of that paint out of there and redeposit a little bit of darker paint, so I might work on that. Um, but I'm gonna wait until it sets up a little bit so it's easier. I would love to um, see your support. I have a tip jar. You can leave me a tip, it's in the description box. I have an Amazon shop. You can buy all of the products that you see here. You can buy toilet paper, you can buy soap, you can buy food. It doesn't really matter as long as you use my link, whatever you buy helps give me a little tiny bit of credit. And then at the end of the month, I make like 80 bucks or so. So it, it helps. And right now, every little bit helps. So um, Sandra, you're such a doll face. I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the tip jar is in Judy. The tip jar is in my description box below the video. Um, or you can go to any of my videos and the tip jar is there. It's, it says leave a tip in my tip jar and it says PayPal. Um, so thank you so much. Have a good night. I love you all. I, Friday 5 live West Coast time. That's when we're going to be doing these. I hope it's a good time for everybody. I know there's no perfect time, but um, thank you so much again, Pam. And I can't wait to see you guys at the next one. Looking forward to it. Many blessings. And remember to stay in the moment. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, love you guys so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend, you guys. You're welcome, Kelly. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry you missed it. It's okay. It's good to see you here. All right. The very last thing I'll do is bring this down. And if I lose you, I'm sorry. But I'll bring it down and see if I can get a close-up going. Oh. 
But I really wanted to show you guys this part if you can possibly see it. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, thank you, Cheryl, for being a moderator. We really appreciate it so much. You're a joy, a, a godsend to me. I can't do it all by myself. Look at that part, you guys. Oh my gosh, does that look like water? So pretty. I'm in love with that, coupled with this right here. Oh, it just looks like... This is where I squirted the paint underneath in the ejection technique. And here's the beautiful flower. Thank you, Rebecca. Aww. I'm so happy I was here for you guys. You guys are here for me. Now see the center? This is where I want to scoop up some of this paint. So after this dries a little bit, I'm going to probably use like a, a big, like one of these big popsicle sticks like this. And I'll probably scoop out some of that and then put a little, either a dark center in there or a light center. I'll, I'll do something, some kind of a center because that's a little bit messier than I like. But overall, that's the painting, you guys. Thanks so much. If you're interested in this painting, please let me know. And much love to you. Bye-bye.